Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're gonna take a look at how to put words on things in SketchUp. So there is a command called text in SketchUp. And what this command does is it allows you to put leader lines and call out text, basically saying, you know, here's a thing and, and put it on there. You can also make it screen text so it floats above the drawing. But what we're talking about is actually adding text in the model. So if I have a surface and I want to put like make a sign or I want, you know, text on the side of a building, a car logo, something like that, I want to put that text embedded into make it part of the geometry. So not text floating around, but actually words on things. And that's what we're talking about right now. So I came up with three different thoughts on how this could work. And, and I'm going to give, I'm going to give props to somebody for, for helping me with the third one. Cause this, the third one was not my idea, but I was thinking there's three different ways I might get some words. So here I have some 3d text here. I have an image of text. So this is actually a PNG file, I believe. And then over here I have some 2d line text. So we're going to take each of these and we're going to put them into these curved surfaces. The reason I chose curved surfaces, is because curved surfaces are a little bit trickier than flat surfaces. So for flat surfaces, a lot of this stuff is pretty simple. Uh, you know, if I could just grab this as a texture, paste it right onto a flat surface. I could place this onto a surface, it would be done, and then this is pretty simple too. So I just wanted to talk about these because adding a curved surface adds a little bit more work. So I have to be more conscious of how I'm putting it onto a surface if that surface is not flat. So let's start over here with 3D text. Just to actually real quick, let's just back up. I did mention this kind of text, so I can grab this and click like, and it can give me text here and I can type in whatever I want. So I can just come in here and go, what? So I could do something like that. That text works too, but that's not the kind of text we're talking about. We're not talking about call outs or anything like that. What we want to actually look at is words on things. So. Let's start with this one. So here I have 3D text and I did just make this with the 3D text tool. Um, I created a two foot tall, three foot deep. I can't remember the dimensions I used. The, anything, anyhow, I just used the 3D text tool to make this 3D text. So when you create 3D text, it does show up in a component like this. This is actually nice for putting it into things because What's going to happen here is it's going to allow me to position this. I'm just going to use the move tool to slide this back into the face and figure out exactly where I want that to be. Um, I had the pre I had that close to being centered. I, I am closer than I even thought. But with 3D text and a 3D object, what I would recommend is yes, group or component one, group or component the other. Then you can do a couple different things. One thing I could do is I could grab both of these items, right click, I could say intersect faces with model. And what I'll get is I'm going to take both of these and just slide them over a little bit because what it creates is just literally just lines where those two overlap. Uh, if I put it back and I was to take these and take it off, I'd see I have that text on top. You see, it follows the face there. It is separate though, right? So again, I can move this away. So that might work out to your advantage. There may be a reason you actually want this to be separate and you could modify and make that a group right now. So that is an option. I'm just going to set that over to the side and uh, let's get this back over here. Uh, line that up about the middle and let's slide it back in again. The other thing I could do is I could come into this surface, select just this face, right click, intersect face with model, and I'm going to get something that looks very, very similar. I'm going to scoot this one forward uh, because it intersects, but this time this actually broke the face of my model. See that? So if I wanted to do something like I want to come in and color it, right? So if I want to come in here and uh, grab my paint bucket and maybe, you know, just put like a black color in here, make these stand out as, as letters or something. Hold on, I'm, I'm having a hard time finding my window. There we go. I got a red in there. So I could come in here and I could just color just the letter surfaces if I wanted to. So I could do something like that as well. Um, this works pretty good. So the thing that this, a couple things that this does, we want to look at everything here. 
So it projects straight back. So it's hard to tell because it didn't have a huge, uh, you know, this wasn't enormous stretching across here, but if I look like, how wide was this W? If I go from here to here, it tells me it's one foot nine. If I go from here to here, because it stretched this across this, this rounded surface, it actually ended up as one foot 10. So it's slightly distorted because it stretched it across here rather than laying it flat across. So that's one thing that will happen. The other thing, every once in a while with intersect, you get something like this. So for whatever reason, it didn't break all the way here. So I might have to come in and tell it, okay, let's, let's break that. There we go. Now we got it broken and now I can come back in here and finish that. So I could do something like that. That would be an option. That's 3d text would give me those options right there. That that's one thing I could do. The second thing I could do is I could take an image and put the image onto the surface. So the way this works is I have to take my image. So right now it's an image. So if I pick on it, I hit entity info, it's an image. I need to first off make it into a texture. So I do that just by right clicking and saying explode. When I explode an image, it turns it into a surface with a texture on it. So now if I right click, I'll get my texture options. I wanna make sure projected is turned on. And then I could actually just go to sample, sam or paint bucket, sample this face and then paint it right here and it'll put it on there. Ooh, I did that the dumbest way possible. Hold up. <laughs> I'm going to explode this. <laughs> there we go. And I'm going to deselect. All right, let's try that again. B sample. I put it onto the container. So it put it everywhere and it wasn't right. All right. So I could do that. And there it goes on there. So you can see how it's too big because this is a projected texture. It's taking everything like literally it's lining it up like this. Here, let's try an x-ray and look at this. It's lining it up directly like this and just pushing it straight through onto the, the surface. So if it's too big like that, I'll turn off x-ray, I can't work in x-ray. I can triple click this and I could scale. An option to scale about the middle, make it a little bit smaller. And then let's try that. Sample that, paste it on here. All right, I'm closer. Do it one more time. Triple click, scale about the middle. Let me scoot it over just a little bit too. All right, there we go. Sample that, put it there. And there you go, you get the idea. The issue with this um, is that this is just an image. So this right here is one full, this is just a surface. So if I wanted to come in and color something, this is the color on this page, on, on this piece right now. So I couldn't come in and grab the, the paintbrush tool and put it on here. If I tried to paint this surface, it would just take the red and replace the whole thing. If I wanted to change the color of these letters, I would have to generate a new image to project on here. So not a bad thing, but ah, oh man, it's killing me that that's not, hold up. Undo one more time. All right, let me come in here. <laughs> uh, we'll just slide it down ever so slightly. There we go, and one last time. Ah, oh, yeah, that's it. Third try is a charm. Was that my third try? I think so. Third try is a charm. Um, all right. Last option here. One other thing we could do here. In this case, I have a group, and that group is a bunch of line segments. So this is exploded. If I had, you know, solid black text, this would work the same well. If it's just, you know, line text. Uh, in this case, it's outlines. But this would work the same way. Uh, and I'm going to credit Justin on my team, not Justin Geis, but Justin H, uh, who is, joins us on the live streams. That guy who makes the, the models for the release, that guy is saying, hey, why don't you try this? He wasn't even sure if this was going to work or not, and it did. What we're going to do is we're actually use sandbox tools, drape, to take these two groups and push this on here. To do that, I do have to make it vertical. So I'm going to take both of them. I'm going to roll this one up like that. There we go. And I want to take this and I'm going to drape it over this surface. So this is a group again, and this is a group of just edges. I'm going to go to tools, I'm going to go to sandbox, I'm going to hit drape, and I'm just going to click right here. Look what it does. Oh, it's so easy. I like when things are easy. Not enough things in my life are easy, I guess. Um, anyhow, let's break that back there like that. And there we go. Look at that. It did take it, it took those line segments, it took them as segments and cut them in. So again, same thing I saw before, 
is this is actually broken. So if I did want to come in here and color this, we'll grab a different color, we'll grab a blue for this. And if I come in here and I color these, it is broken surfaces, so I do have the ability to do uh, that. There we go. So with that, you can kind of see how we went about, get this looking nice, looking real nice. Uh, you can see how we went about using those different types of words, 3D text, image-based words, or line segment-based words, and you can see how we used each of them on each surface. There's obviously, like I said, these two ended up pretty much the same, but coming from two different inputs. This one is quite a bit different. This is very different because the image we're using, but you can see how that happened. And you ever look at the same thing, like the same word often enough that it looks wrong because I swear this is not how you spell word anymore because I've just seen it too often. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about though. So, I thought that was kind of a cool idea. I had never thought about that. Uh, there's not, you know, like I said, there is a text tool, but that text tool is not like modeling words inside of your model. If you do want to do that, uh, this should give you some good options to get started. And there's probably ways to combine these as well. So uh, depending on how you put it on, like I said, this same thing works for flat surfaces is just a lot quicker and easier. Flat surface uh, with lines, you just draw it on and put them in context, boom, done. So uh, a little quicker, a little easier. But uh, if you can do it on a curved surface, you can do it on a flat surface as well. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and we notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, above all, leave us a comment down below. Let us know if this process works for you. If you have a different way you go about putting words into the model to create things like signs, or if you have a different idea, if there's a, a modeling process you're struggling with or a thing you'd like to see how to build, or a, a command you'd like a deeper dive into. Let us know about that down in the comments. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.